Sorry. This, we're, this is us. Okay. It's a new cold open. I don't know. We're just going to talk over West. You know, we should talk about, we should talk about why I, uh, right I didn't shower. He's on the air. You, you didn't shower? No. By the way, the, the volume's a little funky right now. That's okay. That's eh, nothing. Yeah, that's no big deal. Uh, okay. Why did why didn't you? I, so okay. So you said you needed to shower to do a podcast, which just by the way sets off alarms with everybody, right? You know that, yeah. right? Yeah. Uh, maybe I don't know. So, uh, have you ever heard of something? And I don't know if I'm just making this up, but the crusties. <sighs> I don't know where this is going. Go, just go with it. I know no, I don't know what just, that is. No, it's just like every day when I wake up, I have crusties in my eyes on my cheeks, a little bit on my nose, and my eyes have like oil in them, I don't know why, like around it, and I'm like half awake, and I literally, no matter what time of day it is, and how awake I actually feel, I always look like I had just gotten out of bed. <laughs> Even though I have a buzz haircut, like, and so, I, so I've nicknamed it the Krusties. And so, uh, I, I think you made a comment that this wasn't prom or something. Yeah, we're not going to high school, like we're not going to homecoming dance today. This yeah. Is the hockey podcast but, but i like i can't even think completely straight <laughs> until i get a shower and so i mean i think so right now it's five o'clock almost uh in the day and i i think that's the most blogger thing uh about me as i'm taking mid-afternoon showers after i feel like i've gotten all the important writing done i'm on the same uh, schedule as so, you though dude like i'm i'm taking my shower at like 3 30 in the afternoon these days Oh, really? Okay. That makes me feel a lot better. Yeah, I'm broken inside. I mean, no, no, we're both bad. Don't feel better. We're both in bad shape. <laughs> um, the, the reason I brought you here today is to talk about the summer, which is technically over, I guess, because it's past September 21st. I never really know how that works. Um, but I've, have, I've, I've made a presentation for you okay. to discuss uh, what I did with my uh, summer vacation. Um, okay. I did spend some time on this, so my feelings will be hurt uh, if you have a negative reaction to anything that's going <laughs> on uh, in my presentation here. Also, I did this as well. So it's going to oh, be one of these ooh. kinds of, of podcasts. Uh, if you're listening just audio only, this will still work. It'll be fine. Um, there's there's nothing here that is is visual only. Uh, so Yeah, you just can't see some sick drop shadows and some... <laughs> mid 90s gradients i did i did nothing this summer uh uh what about you uh i actually don't need you to answer that because i already know the answer i think the bottom of the screen's a little blocked up i'll fix that anyway um yeah. what did you do don't worry i already have the answer because i stalk you on the internet um here's a photo essay i put together of you being around water <laughs> really makes you seem like you're like a Baptist revivalist, uh, oh. dunking person. But uh, I see multiple waterfalls, different waterfalls. Uh, and I think one is just like the Monoxy flooded behind your house. Yes. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. What's the bottom one here with you and Ethan underneath the bridge? That is uh, Ligonore Creek. Um, we, were, we just walked two miles in it one day in the summer. It's beautiful. And uh, you know, we're already like a week into like training camp, and I already miss it. <laughs> you can, you will, we'll, we'll, we'll make you some time. We'll make it work. Uh, but you guys, uh, yeah, we'll get to training camp in a minute. But you guys have been very busy. Yeah, uh, you and Chris killing it. All right, uh, I have more things of you. This is you oh, yeah. with celebrities. Yes, uh, Wes, Kevin from the Office. Yes, uh, Terry Crews. No, that's not Terry Crews. That's uh, the guy that says Stu. Um, Carl Weathers. Carl Weathers. Jeez Louise. Hilarious. Great guy. Uh, and uh, I just have Ethan with it. I believe that's a donkey. Yeah, so or a mini horse. I'm not actually sure either. <laughs> uh, and I did cut it out with the fanatics back here as well. So you had a big travely <laughs> summer, including a trip yeah. to Trashville. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I went to find Philip Forsberg. It wasn't a tourism <laughs> trip. I was trying to rescue him. And. Uh, they locked the doors and didn't let me in, uh, and it was pathetic. But I, I think your overall national trip was a huge success, right? Other than oh, rescuing yeah. Philip Forsberg. Yeah, so um, basically one of the things that we do is that um, over uh, during the pandemic, you know, I needed to get out, and we couldn't really go anywhere. So we started, like, a lot of people going to national parks and stuff like that. 
uh, to hike. And basically what we did was we, we followed a lot of like national parks on Instagram. We followed a lot of like state, uh, what is it called? Like state tourism accounts. Um, and basically we would get ideas of where to go. And so what we did was we basically did like a, a diamond uh from maryland down to nashville tennessee we went through virginia to go through some waterfalls and then um and then we ended up in the blue ridge mountains and then came back up and so basically we just there were places we wanted to try out we went and um i mean it was it was incredible there the most incredible place we went to was this place called cummins falls where you have to literally hike a mile and a half up a river to get to this like insane like three-tiered waterfall um and we stayed there for like five hours, and it, it was crazy. Was, I, uh, was that um, was th- like was this went like a three tier waterfall? That one, that one's in Blue Ridge. Oh. Um, the one that yeah, the Cummins Falls is another one, but um, it was it was this crazy experience, and and I mean we saw so many snakes, we almost died in Kentucky, which was crazy. <laughs> and I'm willing to tell that story if you want me to, but Please. um, I don't want to take too much. Do do you? All right, all right. Uh, timer set for. Two minutes go oh two minutes okay there's this place called cumberland falls uh where you can park beside the waterfall we went out we saw it then on the other side there was this place called uh eagle falls where you had the mic where you had to hike a mile across the top of the mountain uh to go down and see it anyways because kentucky is kentucky uh the trail was terrible it was not very well marked there was like six trees down blocking the path so you basically had to climb over stuff uh, they had the falls pointing one way, and it was actually the other way. So it was about sunset when we got to Eagles Falls. Anyways, when we started hiking back, there was all these snakes that we saw. There were diamondbacks. That was terrifying. And Ethan was pointing them out and almost petting them. <laughs> Scary. So we started hiking over the trees that had fallen, and we lost the trail completely. And we were on a cliff. And so uh, we started trying to find our way back. We couldn't. So we ended up in pitch dark at like 9.30. Uh, calling 911 with my new iPhone, with th- which thank God had reception. And uh, while Ashley was calling 911 to get us help to get out of there, uh, I saw a bear climb down a tree and look at us. All right, now, then we saw other snakes. <laughs> uh, and so anyways, about an hour later or 30 minutes later, something like that, it felt like 10 hours. Um, the firefighters found us in the woods. Uh, we had like blinky lights. You know, we were really well prepared. We had printed out the the trail, everything. We were the most prepared people in the world. Didn't matter. It's Kentucky. Kentucky is just a different universe. Um, and so, anyways, they found us, and so the guys were like, "Oh man, we're so happy you didn't get bit by one of them diamondbacks." They're like, "Do you smell? Do you smell that cucumber?" Uh, and we're like, "Yeah, it smells like yeah." We don't understand why it smells like cucumber here. They're like. Well, it's mating season for these diamondbacks, and they can jump two times their length. When they got that glaze over their eyes, they'll do anything. And so, you know, they were just terrifying us. Anyways, at the end, they had Ethan, um, they gave Ethan a tour of the firehouse, and he was just so happy, but terrifying. Uh, anyways, always be prepared, have a phone that works, uh, and if you don't know where you're going, stay in the same place, call for help, and... They'll find you. But how do you that how was do you, crazy. Good advice. How do you feel about... Did you ever watch the Blair Witch Project, the original? I have, yeah. It wouldn't happen if they had cell phones, right? Yeah, I don't think so. Hey, Ian. Let's remember some guys. Okay, sure. Uh, that sounds great. My next PowerPoint slide has a number of hockey players uh, who have been oh. on the move or somewhat. Don't worry about the top right corner. That's obscured by our faces. It's just Jeff Carter. He doesn't matter. Where is... Even the braid in here, he looks like he died. He doesn't look... He looks very white. Where is Marc-Andre Fleury? Chicago. Correct. Where is Jakob Rana? Detroit. Correct. And probably not happy. Eh, He's going to get ice time. Um... And he signed. I think he signed a deal, right? He got a like a, a another sort of proven oh, yeah. deal. It was good. Yeah. Uh, he'll do great. Where is Zdeno Chara? Islanders. Correct. For about seven hundred k, I'm happy for him. Somebody in the crashers. I think it was Sheena pointed out 
that him standing next to Barry Trotz alone is worth seven hundred thousand uh, dollars. He's a very tall man and a great guy, um, and he did fine here. Marcus Johansson, Kraken. He's a Kraken. Don't know what his health situation is. We'll figure that out. Uh, cricket. Where is Cricket? He's d- he's definitely with Seattle. He is also with the Kraken. Is he going to get a crack at the Kraken roster, or is it just like a tryout thing? I'm asking you. I I think he's he's very optimistic on social media, so I think he'll make the team. Oh, he's just a positive vibes guy. Um, where's Phil Grubauer? Also the Kraken. Oh yeah, I hit Uh-oh. them too fast. Sorry. All right. No, it's okay. It's getting harder. Cody Eakin. No idea. <laughs> He's a saver. No way. <laughs> Good for him, I guess. I don't know. He's yeah. in the league. Also, he just straight up has an orange mullet in that photo, huh? The the pervy uh, mustache is kind of creepy. There's dude, he genetics made the choice for him. He's he's a redhead. And there's not much he can. Do. <laughs> All right, uh, Joe Thornton. This one I think is the big. Well, it's the biggest surprise unless you're uh, a tax attorney, and then you're like, oh, I get it. Yeah, I think it was. It's the panthers because he made a retirement joke yes yeah uh i'm happy for him uh i don't think he's gonna do anything there up at the top right jeff carter you can't see the logo up here but he's with the the pittsburgh penguins which was one of the ones i was like wait jeff carter plays hockey like the dudes out west (laughs) to you and me that are a bit like so like laser focused on the caps when we're like working on them i don't know what's happening out in cali um brayden holpe this is the one that i had to just like where is he? Zombie Zombie Braden Holpe is playing for the stars. He looks even as a zombie, he looks great. That's a very he looks very <laughs> emotional there. Um the next one I believe is Dougie Hamilton. He is I mean, he's an insipid looking boy. Oh no. Oh no. So oh, no. he he like uh you know, the canes couldn't keep him. Uh and so he this one is the one I was like, oh really? New Jersey Devils. Who oh. are actually looking oh. kind of good. We we should talk about the Devils another day uh last okay. one this one is jesper kokinemi who uh oh, was... wait wait that's the one that's the one where carolina messed with them so it's carolina he's on carolina now he yeah through yeah. the the way the uh the trade sheet the offer the is it offer sheet ha yeah uh through the trade the offer sheet uh yeah he uh left <laughs> montreal uh uh, and that happened. Now, that's a bunch of boys moving around. Here's one who isn't moving around. <laughs> oh, my God. It's a slow one. Jesus. Okay. Um, so, Evgeny Kuznetsov, we had a lot of buzz about it, but it turns out he's still yep. a Washington Capitol. We'll get, yeah. to that. we'll get to that in a minute because I think there's a bunch of things to talk about here about up and down the lineup and what's going on with Kuzi. And he gave some pretty uh, encouraging quotes the other day. We will see. But there's, um, was there one more boy? Yeah, there's one more boy. This is also when I had to remind myself, like, who's on the Washington Capitals defense, which is still an open question in a lot of ways. But Brendan Dillon, where is Brendan Dillon? He's in Winnipeg. And hopefully you will not share the nickname I gave him. Wait, what does that mean? I don't even get you. Is that a reference that I'm not allowed to use? I don't know if it's not allowed, but (laughs) do you remember what I called him on Cratchers today? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, that was uh you can just Yeah, say that it. might it's, be bad. No, it's good. It's fu- it's fine. It's whatever. It's funny. The horse face killer, which is a Wu Tang <laughs> reference and a very petty uh the Dillon. well done. Let's talk about some hockey sons, some hockey nephews, and some hockey uncles. <laughs> uh, I want to talk about the Washington Capitals going player by player, but before we do, there's one top level sort of pot- pattern level thing we need to address which is that okay. they're super old. Um, this is super from last old. season. Every single Washington Capitals player from last season got a full year older. So imagine this being <laughs> taller now. I think all of the players in the league have gotten older, but maybe the average age has gotten lower, not in the Washington Capitals. Their youngest <laughs> player is like 20, well, it's it's like 22 in the goalies, but like 25 among them, like skaters right now. So, yeesh. Um, what do you think of the age situation? Is it a cup? Who cares? I mean, I, I think we saw it rear its ugly head last year. 
at the worst possible time. And uh, I don't know why guys think that the uncondensed schedule will make it any different when they have to play in the Olympics. Uh, I, if you look at the end of the year, it's really condensed. So I think, you know, I don't see how things get, I don't, I don't, I don't see how it could just be randomly different. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if you can't see this, Washington's the only team with an average age above uh, 28. Well, there's a couple teams that are like right at 28. They're above 30. So they're like two years on average older than every other team in the league as of last year. Uh, yeah. Just you're like, whoa, they're old. They won the cup and they've been, they've kept a core together like for like 12 years, which is banana bread. Uh, so uh, let's get into our boys, starting with one of the most broken down human beings on the planet. Sweet Nikki Backstrom, who we recent. Well, we. It kind of knew, but we recently had it confirmed that he had a hip injury with surgery six years ago, and quote is yeah. so so now. Uh, and then just the other day, the Washington Capitals reported that he would start the season late. How late is late? I don't know. I, I, I you know, week to week, it can be very, very uh, obtuse. So I'm not sure where he's going to land. I mean, he had the whole summer to rehabilitate it, so. Uh, the the question I have too is that twenty tens to 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 rehab it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I mean, the other thing is too is that like, um, did he have surgery? I mean, that's unclear too. Oh, I thought he affirmatively said he had surgery. Oh, this summer. Yeah. Yeah, this summer I don't know. Um, so I think it seems like it could potentially be a injury he's dealing with, you know, or something that he's dealing with for the rest of his career. It seems like he's been doing it for the last six, seven years. Um and it just flares up at times so that's problematic um yeah i don't know uh kind of worried about it uh not sure what to say um it's good that they have Connor mcmichael and and protoss can play center but um yeah ah uh, yeah uh i'm i'm almost of the like the you know you wrote a story er earlier this summer that like he's got buzz to be the captain of the swedish team i'm really gonna yes. write it off now to say i really doubt he's gonna do it i mean that's a huge honor but uh yeah he's not fit <laughs> to play like uh over there um a lot of people gave me a hard time that i gave him a three on the speed rating oh yeah um until they... very exact ratings yes. you know oh uh, well until they found out that like like one is a is like a a, a person who can't move like like and seven was the highest so you know what eh, i probably missed the law off there um, I am, uh, there's a statistic I've been working on internally in my head and not really sharing with anyone or allowing anyone to vote on, which is a sort of like nephew uncle rating. It's sort of like the, um, pH scale, uh, where if you're positive, you're like more uncly than nephew. -y. He's more uncle. Oh. He's, he's probably one of the most uncly players, uh, left on the team. Obviously, Char would have been higher, obviously. Um, before we get into our next player, uh, and this is alphabetical, by the way. Uh, I do want to do a quick interlude to talk about the Washington center depth. There's Backstrom, who's 33. He has no hips. Kuznetsov we'll talk about in a moment. Uh, almost 30. He's lacking chill. We'll talk about his situation. Lars Eller, 32. Hurt three times last season. And then Dowd, who is solo on the wrong side of 30, but is uh, flawless. Like you just mentioned, there's uh, Connor McMichael. And is it Alex Protas? Uh, Alexi, Alexi, Alexi Protas. Uh, so who are uh, sort of uh, you know in the farm system and and I have a feeling we'll see them. It's gonna be a little bit sketchy down the middle. Um, because uh, this is a wow. Weird this situation. is this is a really depressing screen. Like I'm just looking at it. I'm like I'm like breathing it in, and I'm I'm just like wow. We are we are in trouble. <laughs> well, so so Kuznetsov was not traded after a bunch of buzz because yeah. Washington effectively has Nick Dowd as its top line center otherwise and i'd like nick dowd but even he's going to tell you he is not a tough line center but <laughs> like backstrom wasn't fast before his injury definitely isn't fast now kuznetsov we'll get into but he's effectively like png by the team in a lot of ways lars eller had is, is a good player but he's not he's not here to do you know top line scoring and he's a good deal past his peak and he's been he had a really rough last year with injury so, yeah, uh, yeah, kind of a bummer. Don't worry, it'll get better. Next slide, John Carlson. If you play fantasy hockey, you need to get him because fantasy hockey is stupid. It's all based on points, and he just steals everybody's points all the time. 
he is just a point stealer. He's get, he's going to get a secondary assist on every other goal this season. Uh, both the Norris voting, like yeah, there's not a lot to say about John. Nor like, oh, pardon me. Uh, he's not a super interesting guy, but uh, he did shatter his kneecap, uh, which is a pretty gross injury, by the way. Yeah, that was pretty gnarly. I loved it. <laughs> I have him as a null rating on nephew uncle, um, because he doesn't put out familial vibes to me. In fact, if anything, <laughs> like. He feels like he's perfectly bro, which is the neutral, you know, like the homeostatic position on the nephew uncle. It's not important. I, I feel like his hairline communicates uncle, though. Or great uncle. Yeah, he's got the same <laughs> hairline as uh, Bernie. Um, all right, moving on. <laughs> Nick Dowd. Uh, I love, uh, I, listen, I'm not going to pick on you, JJ Riga. This is really funny. I've done a million times worse. Uh, 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 once in this, but he's not talked to Laviolette about what a backstroke absence would mean for him. Well, he's the top line center, I'll tell you that. Uh, Louis uh, is his son, right? Yes. Very cute. Very cute. I, I met him at Locker's uh, golf outing, by the way. Awesome. How'd that go? He is a full of energy. He's extremely tall. Like, that was, that was, I actually told him that and I felt really weird. I was like, Holy crap, you were way taller than I thought you were. Now, remember, I'm 6'1". He was like three inches taller than me, maybe. And I was just stunned. You know, like, he looks kind of tiny on we, TV. And we spend he so is not much, at all. We spend so much time around fake hockey tall guys. Like, yeah. like I'm not going to name any. I'll, okay, here's one who's out of the league. Like, Stanislav Galiev is not a tall boy. Like, <laughs> and like, like, Connor Carrick, good hockey. Actually, he's a great hockey player relative to me. And he's not super tall either, but I had a, I smoked a cigar next to Mike Knubel once, and that dude is like eighty feet tall, uh, and just like <laughs> yeah. dropping, yeah, skittles to me out of his pockets. The um, I love Nick Dowd. He's the he's the sexiest tomboy beanpole on the planet. Uh, I think he's got a, a very strong Jay Beagle energy to him. Yeah, and I think uh. He's gonna. He's gonna have to do work next season. Him and Hathaway uh, are gonna have a little bit of challenge on what their defensive assignments are gonna be and how much they're gonna be in there. Uh, and it, they're gonna be sort of like serving two masters, as we'll talk about a little bit later. But uh, yeah, that's our that's our Nick Dow check in. Here's Lars Eller. Uh, really rough last season. Um, <laughs> I'm laughing at my own joke. He had a bad year. Bad year last year. So that's okay. So did I. Um, I made him a fighting ability one, which seems uh, like I was picking on him. Uh, but I mean, Brad Marchand made him bleed. So, yeah, that was fun. That was that was that was a sucker punch. That was a sucker punch. Yeah, to be it, fair, it but. was. Uh, I like it when anybody gets beef with uh, with Brad Marchand, like because he'll he'll he doesn't care if he's heating somebody or pumping somebody else's tires. He will yeah. he will do a, a a shoe match with anybody. Um, <laughs> you you could be a fourth liner, and Brad Marchand's like, yeah, you're my nemesis for the next week. Um, I, and honestly, anyone who brings page views like him and Ryan Reeves, I love. We're going to talk about Reeves when we get to the W <laughs> part of the alphabet. Uh, we're done with Lars Eller. Uh, Carl Haglin. Um, <laughs> His eyes. <laughs> yeah, well, they're beautiful. There's not a ton to talk about Carl Haglin. Um, oh, I said, just like Scandinavia, he has no finish. That's a geography joke because finish <laughs> is like Finnish and uh, Scandinavia, you think Finland's in it, but it's not. Um, I don't have anything to say about Carl Haglin. Neither does anyone else. Neither is Carl Haglin. He very, barely ever talks. Gorgeous man, though. Yeah. Okay, moving on. Yeah. Jordan Hathaway. This is actually, this whole thing's a joke. This is uh, an intervention for you, Ian. It's time for you to get over the spitting thing. Uh, no, nope. you need I'm not to, getting over it. You, you got to do a reset. Everyone loves Gordon Hathaway, except for you. You're the only one who's not fully on the boat. We need him, and the Capitals, more specifically, need him to do fighting they need him to be the punch person so that tom wilson is not the punch person next season we're going to talk a lot more about that but one of it like he's a good hockey player he and doubt are an awesome pair together and uh, i have a feeling that he's the one that's driving the effectiveness of the Dow like pairing more than anybody else Haglin's great as well mm -hmm. um but i i think that he's got a lot of value as sort of like an energy sink like a heat sink for the rest of the team um uh i think when we get into, you know, 20 games of the season, I think we'll see exactly what's going on there. But uh, I think he's a really good player, and I really enjoy his work. And I think uh, if anyone's got to, like, 
be the exhaust valve for the team, uh, especially with like Tom Wilson heat builds up. He's the guy. So uh, thank you for agreeing to get over the spitting thing. Uh, everyone heard you say that on the podcast today. Anything you want to say about Garner Hathaway? Uh, apology would be fine. I don't think he likes fighting. Fine by me. He's still gonna have to do it. <laughs> like he doesn't have a choice. Like the, Reeves is gonna fight somebody, and he's not gonna get Wilson because he'll die. Oh, he's definitely gonna get Wilson. No. Peter, he's definitely gonna get Wilson. Okay, we'll see. Uh, Nick Jensen. Yeah. Evgeny Kuznetsov. All right. Uh, we are okay. Kuznetsov. Uh, His a... goatee looks like chocolate smear. <laughs> he, does he even get into the like fudge sickles badly? <laughs> like when he's eating a waffle taco with uh, Nutella. I um I had uh my friend Matt Matt Smith from from my year in high school. He he came over with his twin daughters on the Fourth of July. You were invited. You coasted. That's okay. The uh his daughters. I made homemade fudge sickles with peanut butter in them, and I was like, you can have these. Because they were like, you guys are boring. We want to play video games. So I leaned, like, whatever. We got them video games. They didn't like the video games. I was like, here's fudge sickles. I made these. And they were like, these are just so-so, Peter. Like, I was like, it worked so hard. I made homemade fudge sickles. That's a... Why are we talking about this? Oh, his goatee. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Just because he looks dirty in uh, the face. Best uh, <laughs> best Japers ring tweet of the last year is when someone would be like, uh, if you had to think of somebody who would get COVID twice... It would be Kuznetsov. <laughs> like, yeah, that's him. Um, I like we were we were so certain it was over. We thought there were like hours left in the Kuznetsov era. Oh yeah. In I, oh, I, yeah. I don't remember. Oh, time is fluid to me. But at some point, right? And then it didn't happen. I again want to cite back our, our our center depth, you know, situation from earlier. But not allowed to play in the Olympics because of his uh, a drug problem, drug thing from a couple years ago. Um, he had COVID twice. Again, that's not a personal failing. That's just he missed a lot of time due to COVID, though the circumstances by which he got COVID, uh, at least one of them had to do with, like, breaking protocol, and the sick one probably did as well. Um, the Capitals did a ton last season to make his numbers seem better than they were, uh, including yeah. sending Nick Dowd and, and Garnet Hathaway to the woodshed. Um, and you can see from the fan happiness results, 3.6, 3.8, and then like barely over 2 point something, maybe like 2.4 at the end there. Just the biggest dropper of the season. I think we're ready to the Kuznetsov uh, uh, renaissance. I, I think if the man's got focus, uh, his, he's definitely got his health now, I, I think. Um, I'm rooting for the guy. Uh, I don't know if stuff's beyond repair or what, but um, I got I to root for him, especially if he's going to be here for the duration. Yeah, I, you know, I thought he was like, like you said, hours away from potentially getting like cut. Um, I think there's still a lot to be learned from why they got suspended him and uh, Sam Sonoff last year. And um, yeah, I'm kind of surprised that he made it through the summer. But I think that also speaks to his contract and, you know, the other centers that were available like Jack Eichel. And I think that took a lot of the smoke uh you know an intention from last year so um yeah so i uh, it'll be interesting i mean you know the quotes the quotes were were good from yesterday uh you know his first day uh after practice and stuff um and the quotes were good from mcclellan but we've heard good quotes before you know so brooks likes um, and he's in the best health of his life after he shattered his pelvis and cloten <laughs> yeah so so uh you know what? Are the words are wind. I think I think you've said that before. <laughs> so. I didn't say that. George R. R. Martin said that. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, uh, watch this space. Uh, also, I think everyone at home is being like, "Well, Ian's being kind of cryptic, and and he's clearly alluding to information that he has that he's not willing to disclose." I don't, I don't know if I, no, I don't know if I do. I don't know if I do. I, I mean, I heard things, but hearing things is different than knowing things. Well, How about I, that? And. Uh, yeah, uh, a lot of buzz. We, I think even Friedman was like, it was out there, and it, they didn't get the return they were looking for. I think I did. I mean, that? everybody, everybody can use their imagination, and I'm not saying that's right. I'm just saying I like that. You vibe. know, something, something's fishy. Something's fishy. Candidate. You know okay. what I mean? All right. 
<laughs> moving desperately on from that. Where's my cursor? There we go. Next up, Ant Man. Oh, um, everyone knows the deal. Scored a bunch, then stopped scoring. Who cares? <laughs> He's gonna have another year. He's gonna do great. Dog, stupendous wait, dog. Wait, wait. What's the? Uh, oh, I can't remember the new Deadspin site. It's Defector. Yeah, Defector wrote an article about how people like Capitals fans. Sure, he scored what four or five goals to open the season, but Capitals fans were not gonna like Mantha because he disappears. And I was looking at his stats the first like four or five games. I was like, okay, he won't shoot ninety percent, you know, <laughs> for the rest of his Capitals tenure. So yeah, he's gonna he's gonna slow down here and cool off. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, his it stats like, are amazing. Just just completely disappeared though in it was a weird like way. Twenty. Games. I don't get it. It was it was like he scored <laughs> what five games in a row and then had a, like fifteen games where he was like a slump. It was it was nothing. Weird year. He's got a good dog. His underlying stats are incredible, though. I mean, he's like Hall of Famer in the underlying <laughs> stats. So Hall of Famer in the underlying stats. Is... <laughs> well, what do you have like sixty five percent like possession or something? It was crazy. So uh, yeah, it was a, it was a neat. I mean, like coming out of Detroit. Uh, I don't know. It must be like switching from like hardcore mode to like please don't hurt me mode in Doom. Like <laughs> just the difficulty level just gets ramped down because you have teammates now. Uh, let's <sighs> talk about Orly. Uh, I, I. So when you first of all, uh, <laughs> great reporting earlier when he gave when he gave a little bit of interview in his native language and he's like, oh, yeah, God, it's so have, awkward. It was. I mean, <laughs> it would have been great if he just said what he clearly was trying to say but didn't say explicitly. He's like. No, I've got to get my vaccine. I just haven't gotten it yet. I've been in Russia. I'm, I'm not going to, like, and, like, you can't really always, I don't know. I work with a lot of people that don't speak English as their first language, and yet it's not always gr easy to capture the, the nuance of stuff. Our language is very stupid, and I have to speak it in a in a broken-down way just to have fun. Uh, now, granted, he's he did this interview in Russian, so let's not give him that out, But but, like, again... If you assume that websites in North America aren't going to cover something, you're probably going to have a different answer, you know, than something else. It's like Dima, now, I just want to put it out there. <laughs> I love, I love Dimitri Orlov. I know you I do. love Dimitri Orlov. I love him. I love him. I followed him since he got here. I, I once said he would score 30 goals, which made me look like an idiot. He will one day. No, not 30. Never mind. But he'll score. He'll do good. <laughs> not 30. He might score 50. But, uh, but yeah, I love the guy. So that was the most awkward thing in the world. And then when he was like, I know he likes us, but maybe not anymore. <laughs> but, but, but during the press conference, when he was like trying to dance around, like they didn't capture the full meaning, which I'll give him. That's possible. You know, like, I, I'm not sure that I'm fully articulating myself in a podcast interview. You know what I mean? So um, I, I hear him on that. But uh it, it was just sucked. I hated it. <laughs> it wasn't like Neuver. You, you did have, you know no. I mean? Yeah, maybe. But you know, you, <laughs> Neuver, you, Neuver uh, scorched earth. I don't can care. We, can, we, can we go like one podcast episode without talking about Brooks like Michael Norverth and Boost Pedro no. in the 2010 <laughs> Montreal series? Anyway, um, I thought you did a fine job on that story. I thought it was accurate. And whatever, he got his vaccine, I think. I, don't, I can't remember exactly no, what McClellan said with the quote. Sorry, go ahead. No, no one. Okay, so this is always. So we have a bunch of Russian readers who who read us, and if we get anything wrong translation wise, they crush us. They crush us in the comments. Like it's no one. No one said a word. No, <laughs> you know was, what I mean? Like, it was fine. I, like, I, and I'm not. And, and Igor, Igor never gets anything wrong. You know. Yeah. So. Um. You, you did fine. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, Moving on. Oh yeah. Oh, oh, offense. By the way, I I I think he really is turning on the offense in the way he has in, mm -hmm. in his earlier career. It I, it always depends on what his uh, assignment is. Like if he's like you know doing like defensive work so that Carlson can be attacking or something like that. I think we're gonna see, especially if he gets new defensive partners, we may see a different side of Orlov's game that we haven't really seen. You know, he's yeah. got, we know he's really good through neutral. We know he's like one of the best entry guys on the team. I believe I saw that. Or maybe it was exits. Uh, he was in, he's an important player in neutral. I think we may see him get more involved in offense, especially as like the Laviolette regnum continues. The end. Yeah, uh, I 
I, I think he's he's bound to have a good year. I mean, he's, he looked so confident last year. I think Dale Hunter and, and Adam Oates kind of broke him a little bit, you know? Uh, Fancy new toy. Wanted to wanted to wanted to make the Russian super responsible and you know, right on. There we have it. Uh, oh, and it, which is like look he had, he went from he was one of like the biggest gainers in fan happiness of the season. I don't even I don't even know why four point eight. Yeah, I mean he was up there with like Ovi at the end. Uh, wow. Here's uh, here's Timothy, my bust, y'all. I really thought he was going to Seattle. My bust. Uh, I'm fine with it, by the way. I adore the guy. everything that I was worried about with him. He said, F that, I'm going to keep doing it. Like, at the bottom right, if you're, like, an audio person, um, there's, like, his, like, prorated scoring, like, if every season was 75 games or something like that. Uh, and, because that's all he can play. Um, he's at been, like, a 30-goal pace for pretty much, like, all of it. Like, you know, like, or at or near it. He's been fantastic. He's getting yeah. better as time goes on. I think, like, he's probably getting a little better with, like, uh, shot selection. Seems to be, like, the vibe I get with him. He's obviously an elite finisher. And pairing him with Evgeny Kuznetsov, who's also an elite finisher, had at that time has been great. He'd also been a really good mitigator of Kuznetsov's defensive problems. I love him. Uh, his son is one years old and can skate. Ian, can you skate? No. <laughs> <laughs> Not well. Uh, anything to say about uh, uh, Timothy Jimothy? Uh, one of the best interviews, I don't know, ever, that he gave... Uh... Uh, on the first day of training camp, he's just, he's just a weird guy, man. He's he's it's like he's just weird coming he's, into his own. No, no, no. Weird in the sense that he's like growing, like yeah. growing wildly as his career goes on. You know, like he's becoming more open as a hockey player. Like, you know, if you follow people, like you know, when Ovi came to like guns blazing, I mean, this guy was like saying anything. Girls call me stuff like that in interviews, and I mean, uh, you yeah, know, now he's like very professional and buttoned up. I mean, I'm not saying that Oshi isn't buttoned up, but like. I mean, he's just really open, very, very confident. And yeah, it's amazing how like at this age, which of course he's younger than me, but like, <laughs> what is he like 32, 33, with, 34, something sports, like that. That makes him basically 45. Yeah. <laughs> in hockey years. So it's incredible. It's, yeah. Seriously. It's a, one of, honestly, he's not one of the best players I've ever seen, but he's like one of the most, I don't even know what the word is, but it's just amazing how his, you know, not too many people buck the age trend like he has and become such an incredible player, you know, the, at, the at most his recent age. one I can think of in Washington Capitals lore is Mike Knubel. And he's been here obviously a yeah. lot longer than Knubel did. I talked about Knubel. And Oshie's there. better. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's incredible. Yeah. Um, Ovi. Oh, I love that man. Yeah. Uh, obviously, <laughs> the deal came down. We, we knew it would. It was awesome. Uh, and I think um, well, before we could talk about like the chase. Let's let's talk about the stuff on the right. A, yeah, oh yeah, old as hell, pretty gross. Thirty six, <laughs> not at a good age, but it's Ovi. He'll be fine. Why did I put eight cantaloupes on this slide, Ian? Oh, oh, I know why. <laughs> okay, first of all, I gotta credit Elizabeth uh, Kong on the website for this. Uh, so during his press conference, Le Ted Leonsis told uh told a story about how uh you know he was down in Raleigh for uh, NHL draft day two thousand what four or five. Uh, and uh, Ovi, he saw Ovi, and he said that God, he was just so insatiable. He ate eight cantaloupes. So I started writing the story because that's an obvious R and B story for anyone who has followed us for more than a week <laughs> that we write dumb stuff. And and so, so we started writing this story. And Elizabeth is is one of the most detail oriented people and the most intelligent people I've ever met in my life. And she started like searching the eight cantaloupes thing. She's like, that seems familiar. And so we had actually written about the cantaloupes before, and before uh, Ted said he had three cantaloupes, like three whole cantaloupes. And uh, <laughs> so I was like, uh-oh. It's cantaloupe inflation. And then, and then after the NHL draft, we asked us to interview with ESPN, and he said one cantaloupe. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it went from one cantaloupe to eight cantaloupe. That's a huge data visualization opportunity loss. Like, you could have been like eight, three, one. <laughs> and and we did the math and it was like 30 pounds of cantaloupe that's how much eight is i think so something something's just absolutely ridiculous uh, <laughs> so awesome. like so like i'm trying to imagine alex ovechkin consuming like 20 30 pounds of cantaloupe in like two hours 
Oh my god. And it, was just, it was the funniest thing ever. And I love Ted. I, I didn't want to post it. I didn't want to post it, but I had to. You, had you to. know? Yeah, like, those, are, those are the facts. Those were the facts given to me, just like Orlov. But uh, that was one of the that was the best thing of the entire offseason. I know. The, the, so. the big story, like, I don't think that we are adequately prepared for how much of a foreground Ovechkin chasing Gretzky's goal record is on not just like a capitals not just a dc not just a hockey thing like it's like a global sport thing it's a big deal it's gonna be a massive deal in russia it's gonna be a big deal in canada it's gonna be, get everybody worked up it's i don't know it, uh, if there's something to be like excited about or or to focus in on like a on like a, a narrative that's coming it's what is ovechkin's goal output what's his pace to catch mm -hmm. gretzky what will he need to do it and uh we're gonna be on it that's all i can say like there's a lot to be going there what how will ovechkin score will his power play looks be like i did not love his power play production last year but i loved everything else yeah tbd even strengthly he was amazing last year mm -hmm. um one of the things that actually intimidates me is i imagine five years in the future and i'm like what is our website going to be like in five years just like because that's going to be probably a lot of attention for us too it's all nfts you know if you think of you know, if you think about it, like the Winter Classics, when those happened, our our site just got flooded with traffic. What's it going to be like during the chase? I mean, because I think most people are going to turn to us. Uh, I, I, and that's going to be a lot, you know? And, you know, I think it's. I'm really looking forward to it, you know? Do you, so. do you remember? I um, Can we talk about the Russian doctorate thing? Oh, yeah, sure. So he's like a couple credits shy of getting his, his doctorate um or a dissertation which, or something so well that's the thing I, I i've worked with like people that are like you know phds medical doctors there's also like doctors of public health there's things called like the mm -hmm. dphil the doctor of philosophy which is just basically philosophy doctor backwards but like you can get different like top tier degrees in different places from different accredited organizations or some non-accredited organizations uh and in russia their doctorate isn't really like the same thing as like our our doctorate. Definitely not the same thing uh, as. No, we wrote I, about so this. I to, mm -hmm. Yeah, I talked to Ashley about it. Ashley, my wife, who is a uh, uh, middle school science teacher, and she also got her uh, graduate degree. Um, so she explained it as kind of, sort of like uh, Jill Biden, who uh, Jill Biden, and I'm not dissing that either. Is like her, uh, you know, she, her doctorate is through teaching, and so essentially Ovechkin. Uh, if he presents his thesis and it's defended and it's good, uh, he will then be a doctorate in a sense of hockey. I, because yeah. that's basically what his dissertation is about, is about like, uh, well, kind of, it's about how kids can learn to play hockey and, and things of that nature. From what I recall, I wasn't prepared. Uh, but um, so it's really interesting. I, I mean, it's just how many, you know, superstar athletes can you say will be a doctor? It, it just it, Wait, and then everybody dissed Ovi for being dumb back in the day. You know what I mean? It's just didn't we do a story with Fedor about Kuznetsov doing the same thing about like power plays or penalty kills? Or something? Th yeah, yes, something similar. But I don't think he's kept with it. Okay. Um, and I agree. I agree. It's not necessarily on the same level as like it is, but it isn't as in the United States. But yeah, I just that's fascinating, right? It's just a totally fascinating story. I have um uh like people come up to me like Peter, what are you gonna what, what's gonna what's gonna site gonna be called when Ovi retires? I'm like the same thing. I don't why would we change the site? <laughs> but like no one ever goes like what do you do when when Ovi's a medical doctor and is is you have you get your surgeries from him? Like uh, I guess we'll we'll change the website to RMNB MD or something. It'll be fine. <laughs> that's not what I'm love it. Dude, oh that's a shirt. That's a shirt. <laughs> that's a shirt. I, like a stethoscope down seeds. the collar. <laughs> <laughs> all right uh oh Sandy, boy your fave your fave I, I i can i can have my mind changed obviously tim's one i've had some travails last year um, a few yeah uh and he had one of the best games i guess like people point out to me one of the best caps games in, as measured in like uh you know goals saved above expected until the one that he just handed them to them in overtime <laughs> Uh, great point. Really made your case well. What and then what happened is what you say. Um, <laughs> I really thought he was a goner, uh, but instead he stuck around. He was protected in the the expansion draft. Got a two by two deal. I think that's a very mellow deal. I thought it'd be a little lower, but what's up? 
defend uh, or explain what you mean by goner. I just want to hear your side. I like. Oh, what do you mean by that? You know, what? I, I I thought that the Capitals would not do anything with him. I guess I I was probably over my skis a bit there. Um, no, it's okay. It's okay. I, I probably expected him to sign a new deal at below qualifying offer level, uh, which <laughs> I think probably is what I don't know what his qualifying offer number what number would have been. But like this is not a very expensive deal for a, a, a goalie. Yeah. Um, I still think he could have a tremendous career. He just hasn't gotten there yet. That's okay. Um, I just feel like he had fallen out of favor and then had a, a yeah. pretty good comeback in the playoffs. Um, after some really weird stuff went on, I think they should have gone with Craig. I like Craig. I like people named Craig. Just <laughs> he's a good uh, energy. As you can see, he's extremely nephew vibe. He's got like a. Like, an, like a, a mischievous nephew, like a Dennis the Menace kind of energy to him. <laughs> I mean, it's a little bit deal. like Stranger Things, like he set the firehouse on fire or something. Yeah. Is, but it's just, it's, I don't want, I, I'm kind of like, as far as like vibes and narratives, like I don't love just having to do another season of like, who's going to earn the starting spot between these two guys? Uh, but that's where we are. That's what it's going to be. Yeah, you know, really quick is that uh, I could have seen them cut bait with them 100% koozie too um um none of it makes sense none of the goalie stuff made sense last year just none of it i agree with you like craig should have played the whole series uh, and maybe he couldn't like maybe, maybe he, he yeah. was just i don't want to say too old but i mean i have bad knees at 36 so i have the worst if knees, bad knees then i get it <laughs> um, but, well and we're, we're on topic of goalies the next guy alphabetically is not a goalie never mind uh but you know vanacek will come up in a second um yeah. The other, you know what? The other guy that helped turn the puck over in that game, which Ilya I, gift wrapped it and Justin Schultz. <laughs> I just listen, like, I had talked. Just like, WTF, what are you doing, young goalie? <laughs> Don't sleep. Who <laughs> can't handle the puck? I have talked to everyone I know who who has any X's and O's knowledge. I've got the book. I guess it's nearby. I, I am so certain that Schultz did not play that. He could have played that better, and I think the real goof was sending the puck back there in the first place. Mm -hmm. um, whatever, dude. It was it was the playoffs. It was like 17 months ago. I'm over it. Uh, <laughs> did not finish strong on the old fan happiness ratings here. It's I don't even know how to describe how he did last year. Cause like he was fine. He he, he was. He, I, it's clear that like, one of his, the best one of the best offensive defensemen I had ever seen for like two weeks, and then just was meh. He's very much just meh. meh. Yeah. Like, why is he here? <laughs> meh. I, I, I was like, I, 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 my brain is like overwatered oatmeal, and I was convinced that he was gone and Dylan was still here. And, oh. I was like, and then I was like, oh no, that's. I have no opinion if that's good or bad. I don't know. We're, I need more time to dial in on where Justin Schultz is these days, because I, I don't think I know. That's right. I'll, uh, I'll defer judgment. Moving on, Connor Sherry. Yet another Connor. I like him. I need Ooh, a Conor I, with one N. One N. I need to diversify my jokes. I get that. I've accepted your criticism that no one gave me, but I'm putting it on myself. I'm really excited for him to get ice time. I thought he did awesome last season, but he didn't get a spot. I think yeah, like just didn't get to play as much as he should have, in my opinion. Um, I think he's really. He was player. good. He was good. But when you're the oldest team in the league, why not just give that roster spot to a prospect? Right. On. I liked him. I liked him, but that's the open question. Fair enough. Yeah, and they have a lot of opportunities on the farm. All right. Yep. Uh, I love. Oh, I, I love, love this guy. I love my young king. First of all, tw age twenty four. I remember when I was twenty four. I have my whole life ahead of me. Daniel Sprong. Daniel Sprong. He Were is, you optimistic at twenty four? Uh, when I was twenty four. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've always been optimistic though, so oh, I'm annoying. And that's Yeah. I'm still not there yet. I was see I like, hasn't beat me down yet. I really got into like my drinking days. I was like not like yeah. I wasn't like a big drinker because that sounds like you're you've got problems. But uh, No, you had fun. You had fun yeah. from what I remember. I was a responsible party boy with I yeah. had a lot of wholesome fun with <laughs> people that wanted to have wholesome fun to I just remember pickleback. 
I was a big fan of doing a shot of rail whiskey followed by a shot of pickle juice while listening to either Nickelback Photograph or Sexy Back by Justin Timberlake. Thank you, Daniel Sprong. It was good. TBR. TBR got married this summer. He had a really good pairing with Dylan. That was pretty interesting dynamic they had going on there. He's gone now. Uh, got a two-year bait. Uh, got a two-year extension. I thought he was bait. It really seems like McClellan's like, nope, I want this dude on the ice. Please play him, especially against his brother. McClellan didn't say that. I said that. It's weird that he didn't play, even when the team was really banged up on defense, and then they're playing against Philadelphia, and his brother's on that team, or yep. was on the team. I don't know if he's still there. I don't know what's going on in Philadelphia. I don't think they're a good team at all. Connor Hart's a disaster. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about TVR. Should have played more. Well said. Moving on. Yeah. Double V's. Uh, was with, so, there have been two expansion drafts during the life of Rush Machine Never Breaks. In the first one, the expansion team selected Nate Schmidt. Within hours, we were told by a spy that the Capitals were trying to get him back. That story, it didn't happen, but that story was validated. They tried to yeah. get the dude back. Uh, and then the second expansion draft, they took the goalie, the baby goalie, equal nephew rating, minus four, but he's the good boy, not the bad boy. Uh, and the Capitals successfully got him back in one of the most bananas, like, four-way trades with Winnipeg uh, I've ever seen. Ultimately, like, Brennan Dillon went to Winnipeg. The, they're, it doesn't matter. Uh, he's still with the Caps. He had a brutal hamstring injury in the playoffs. I thought he was okay up until then. We know that was like the first, that was like 15 minutes in the, the playoffs, wasn't it? Second period, but yeah. Yeah. It, like he gave up a goal, then he was like, I'm out forever. Um, it's going to be him and Sam. Uh, like that's going to be the, that's going to be the story in net all year again. Uh, I think he's like a sliver better. Yeah. Don't... What's going to happen if Zach Fucali is like the uh, starting goaltender in the playoffs? That's I mean, Craig Anderson did it last year, so why not? Yeah, why not? <laughs> no, it's first of all, just like Mark Andre Fleury is going to get, he's going to retire by November. It's going to be so, <laughs> because he plays every game. That team is a disaster, like defensively, like one of the worst teams in the NHL last, like the last three seasons, really. And they're like, oh, don't worry. We got Mark Andre Fleury here. Like, Mark Andre Fleury played in front of like a good Pittsburgh defense and then a really good uh, Las Vegas defense. Like, it, he hasn't had like, you know, Lundquist level. But anyway, why am I talking that about was like him? A rage, that was like a rage trade, right? Yeah. Well, Ed, there was a lot of drama there with him and Leaner and uh, the sword and the sword. Uh, uh, De Beer. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, Tom. So there's going to be a lot going on with Tom. Uh, thank you. Uh, let's talk about, first of all, it's going to be a big deal. Like there's going to be more attention on him, more scrutiny on him from the department of player safety than we've ever seen. Just get ready for it. It's going to be there. That's going to be something that all of our brain spaces need to start adjusting to that new reality. There is a powerful one way beef with Ryan Reeves. Tom does not <laughs> know who Ryan Reeves is. I'm telling you this. If you put a picture of Ryan Reeves in front of him, he's going to say, oh, that's my friend and workout friend, Devontae smith Pelly." He doesn't know who Ryan Reeves is. He doesn't care. Reeves is just throwing darts at him, and, he, and, and Tom's like, what? Like, no idea. So um, they're not going to fight. They're not going to fight. They're totally going to fight. They're totally going to fight. He's going to try to fight him three times. There's no way. Uh, tell, tell me about Bash. Bash uh, is a boxing gym that tom wilson invests in which is in arlington virginia there's two locations uh down there and they are opening up their first franchise and that first franchise is in pittsburgh pennsylvania zach aston reese's house cool <laughs> awesome uh it's gonna be a big year for tom his abs seem a little crooked that's just he's like his arms like are he right. has incredible abs, but they just seem a little jagged. Like like it's like it's like a weird rock formation. So the most controversial thing I've ever said in the safe space that is like like the the <laughs> contributor only channels of like our our group chat is that I don't think that that Thomas is as attractive as everyone thinks he is. 
wow. and it's also like wow yeah people people say like I'm, I'm dropping like candace owens hitler quotes but Kara, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes i'm talking to you all right um guys without pictures it's time for you to tell us you have another 30 seconds to tell me about the ferro theory they didn't play him last year because they didn't want to lose him in the expansion draft. Now he's here and he's going to be a starter. Yes. Okay. That was, that didn't, it, it took 10 seconds. They yeah. were just hiding this dude from us yes. for forever. <laughs> uh, Got to be one of the best defensemen on the, I mean, when he was playing with Gurdas, you were like, wow, he's one of the best defensemen on the team. Then we never saw him again. It's, <laughs> it was such a galaxy brain move to be like, let's flame out spectacularly in two playoffs in a row in order to get this one pretty decent third pairing defenseman <laughs> into the line of two years from now right on guys i swear to god i swear to god i don't know if it's true but i guarantee it's true it feels that true. they did that it, it, it goes through, that's <laughs> I mean, all that a lot of people and everybody was like oh uh, so i don't know that's the fair Whatever. theory uh tell me about connor or make other connor uh he'll probably be in hershey but he led uh hershey in scoring last year as a what a uh, rising 20 year old in january um he wasn't supposed to be here last year he's supposed to be in the ohl playing under dale hunter um but because of the pandemic he was here um you know i love the other connor siri but um you know, again, he's taking a roster spot from Connor McMichael. If he's going to be a player, put him in the lineup now. You need you need young players. Fair enough. Not not guys that are about to break. This is cut off so. a little bit on the screen, but uh, it says he gained six pounds parentheses oh, muscle. Yeah. You really have to specify muscle because I gained six pounds last year. No one cares. <laughs> And it also was not stress weight. Stress it weight wasn't wasn't muscle. Reading, reading my writing, <laughs> be like, wow, he needs an editor. Uh, <laughs> At the arena, <laughs> only Tony oh Max. Fanny packs, you'll be good, probably. I don't know. There's, there's, there's no, there's literally no bag that is made to the size they need you to have it in. But you need to have a tiny bag. It has to be very long and thin. Can't be very wide <laughs> which, and which short. Everybody has in their in their repertoire of of bags, but <laughs> uh, masks, yes. Vax requirement, no. It says vax requirement now. Awesome, good typo, Peter. Um, <laughs> That's, I like it. Yeah. Tell me about this man. Oh, uh, uh, his this name man, is... by the way, on screen is a picture of Darius Rucker, the country music musician, formerly known with his work with Huey the Bluefish. Behind him is a man in a red t shirt playing a dobro, and his name is Sasha. I don't remember his last name, and I apologize. Uh, but uh, Sasha uh, is from Russia. So, we, so, yeah, so we got a bunch of pictures, and everybody was really excited on social media that uh, the guitarist at the Hootie, not the Darius Rucker show, was wearing our Not Gonna Be Suck shirt. And so uh, Peter, Peter did the research, incredible oh research, uh, in fact. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, I could have written a novel about this guy by the time uh, you gave me all your, I was all your like music theory analysis too. I was like, this guy's doing some really interesting stuff with non-Western <laughs> scales. Meanwhile, I was like, what the fuck is a dobro? <laughs> You had it. You knew what it was. It was. It's just. It's just no, a no, I was, that is literally the first moment I had ever heard of a dobro. I mean, I thought it was a joke at first because dobro sounds, you know, I don't know, yeah. what you call a dude that's kind of dumb. Yeah, you know, a bro that's kind of dumb, a dobro. <laughs> but anyways, uh, he wore a shirt, and so um, we found out about him. We wrote about it, and I wrote to him before I published, hoping that he'd respond. And this guy is just like the most wholesome person in the world. Um, he was one of the first Russians. Uh, he he no he's he's of an act where he was the first Russian act that had ever been nominated for like a non like I, I forget what it's called like a non traditional Grammy or something. Uh, anyways, uh, so after he came over with this one band, uh, he started being a, a player of uh, he was like a composer. He helped create songs. Now he's with Hootie uh, Darius, and uh, so he said that he uh, he looked through my Instagram. He saw that I went to Nashville. He lives in Nashville, uh, and and he invited me to a Predators Capitals game next year awesome. if he can go. Awesome. So so he was like, yeah. So you know, when I go to kidnap uh, Philip Forsberg, I'll be with Sasha. So yeah, I think you should not say that on like a place where it's recorded. <laughs> oh, my camera went out. Ah. Okay. <laughs> 
Um, next yes, the, the kidnapping is a, is a, is a joke. Just yes. In, joke. in the game, in the game fiction. Um, yes. This is a, like a leaked t-shirt you found of what the Capitals Stanley cup champions thing would have been if they had won the Stanley cup in 1998, they were so close just four games away from winning the Stanley cup that year. Uh, I love, hurts. I love how era specific this t-shirt is. It was a great, yeah. great find. Yeah. I just oil paintings are our thing, you know? <laughs> <laughs> cups that were not won uh the promo schedule uh first of all let's just talk about the thing that everyone is interested in there's no umbc night yes there is a jmu night sounds like a good prioritization to me freaking capitals uh respect there, my university there is a uh tom wilson volleyball bobblehead there's like a gay rambo uh, uh I, I don't mean that in like the derisive way of the word it's literally a pride pride uh, LGBT fanny pack. pride rainbow fanny pack yeah. um fanny packs are it's apparently, amazing by the way i would wear it is it allowed in the in the cap one arena's <laughs> own bag policy <laughs> probably not looks like no, I don't know. probably not though uh home openers on october 13 we're gonna do a lightning round of the rest of the league are you ready to talk about the rest of the league oh i'm ready i'm ready all right uh if, it, if the thing goes off the beep goes off then we're moving on to the next topic First up, known anti-vax hockey boys. Uh, first of all, the league can just suspend your ass if you if you don't want to get your jabs, which is hilarious. Uh, Orlov, Tony D'Angelo, uh, Oilers goalie Mike Smith, all they've been on the jabbed. right side of history now. <laughs> They're on the right. Sure, that's a good way to put it. A uh, guy named Josh, Josh Archibald that no one cares about for the Oilers. A guy, a defensor named Bodie Wild for the <laughs> Islanders. Uh, everyone's favorite like even even press guys are like i hate zach ronaldo even like <laughs> pr guys like on like their public accounts are like that guy can eat trash um tyler bertuzzi is a fun one because like he actually makes money and everyone's like yeah you're gonna lose a half mil if you do this buddy <laughs> uh i don't know who joel Le esperance is he played 33 games in his career and i think the one that's probably most surprising me was uh, travis hamannick being like iffy on that i don't know if any more but we're gonna be all stars they're not gonna be traveling be in all, be in all the stupidity uh side effects are pretty minor uh, uh yes. <laughs> al allerg allergic effects uh explain all of it okay jack eichel uh has what the doc he needs what the doctors say is a bacchiotomy oh, oh. uh jack eichel says is done. that was from like two slides ago we're fine um needs a bacchiotomy uh but the sabers won't let him get one he shared that face emoji uh and then what happened to what like two days ago uh oh he got stripped of his captaincy that was fun i mean it's like the right move but it also just makes you seem like a, a petty 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 boy oh, it, just, it just looks bad in the organization 100 <laughs> percent. i i cannot believe that like we're in a situation where like he's just like not only did he not get his surgery in the offseason when he could have, he's not going to report now. Like the, in my opinion, the union's not doing nearly enough for him. Yeah, even I as like a star player, you'd expect them to be a lot more combative about this. Like it's anyway ridiculous. Uh, I think Elliot. Freeman, you know what Buffalo? What what Buffalo did with him is kind of like Vince McMahon firing Stone Cold Steve Austin. You know what I mean? Like it just had the same vibes. Anyways, I'm not going to follow that one down. I'm I, late in the podcast. We're not we're not tracking that one down. Uh, I love the Carolina Hurricanes saying, "You know how Don Cherry called us a bunch of jerks? Let's take all of the like performative irony out of that, and let's just be that earnestly." So they got yeah. rid of their um uh what's the rookie the Calder Cup nominee goalie? They got rid of Ducky Dougie Hamilton Ducky Hamilton, uh who is just a, a nerdish book boy who is you know. Still pretty darn good, but not obviously because he cussed a couple years ago. They've added, really, a great superstar in Tony D'Angelo. They did one of the <laughs> biggest troll moves of the summer to get KK from Montreal. And they added as an assistant coach, uh, Tim Gleason, uh, whose two most famous roles are getting hit by a puck from Alex Ovechkin and blowing a game in the playoffs by uh, Alex Ovechkin with Alex yeah. Ovechkin on his team. Yeah. Love the guy. Man, Tony D, he can go to hell. <laughs> I mean, like, they are 
I mean, who would have thought a team owned by a guy who made all his money with reverse mortgages would be so <laughs> easy to dislike? All right, the Kraken. Oh, Newest God. team in the NHL. I like the S. Feels like I wrote it on a, a high school yearbook. What do you think about the Kraken's uh, logo and identity and brand? Oh, it's amazing. It's top tier, which is unlike the roster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love Mark Giordano. I don't think he's... Uh, he's like done. A frat yeah, yeah. Uh, yes. <clears throat> uh, Grubauer is great. Uh, I think he ended up being a really good goalie. Big surprise. He developed out of the Washington system. They've got uh, nothing here to really get excited about. Yeah. At all. It's gonna like, be interesting to see who 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 turns into that star player for them. Honestly. They. I, I think we're gonna look back on it, it and say that they fumbled their. They, yeah. they didn't really have a ton of options on the draft, but they really fumbled their. I don't know, like, like cap liquidity. They had so much cap space. There's so many teams against a flat cap who were just banking on the cup, the, the cap going up and up and up. And Carolina, I'm sorry, not Carolina. Um, uh, the Coyotes took all of that opportunity because they were even, they were like, the Coyotes were yeah. in a dire situation with like losing, like sacrificing their draft picks and all the sort of awful turnover they had with uh, uh, Chica, the, the, you know, their last GM. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, Rough situation. Uh, I I'm not super. I, I have a lot of trust in their the the brains that they have out there, but uh, a little bit of a rough start. Can you tell me about yeah. the the opening lineup for the Pittsburgh Penguins? <laughs> Sidney Crosby hurt. Evgeny Malkin hurt. Um, they are also old boys. They are they are just as old as 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 Ovechkin <laughs> based on average, I guess. Um, they're like fifty year old <laughs> Undertaker trying to. Uh, have a WrestleMania match, Hell in the hobbling, cell. and yeah, yeah, that too. It's just <laughs> one big drop onto the the Mexican announcers table, uh, and that's <laughs> that's all they've got in them. They were neither of them are going to start the season. Uh, if you look at the rest of that lineup, have fun. They got Zucker still. We'll see. I, apparently, it's Zucker's speed has fallen off a lot. Um, they're they're they always seem to make it work. They just like kind of like the Capitals, you know, just make it work. True, and they have like some like. Matheson, I think, is on the defense. Like, it's a weird choice mm -hmm. back there. Not, not a great lineup. Uh, like, with them and Philadelphia both looking like they're going to be kind of trashy. Obviously, at least one of them is going to surprise us. Maybe both one. Maybe Washington's going to be crap. Uh, I think the Devils are going to be up if we're just talking about our division, the Metro. Um, yeah. Tell me about uh, Hank Lundquist. Because last time I saw, he was strapping up his pads. He was getting ready to warm up, and then you broke my heart. Yeah. Well, which is kind of a bad metaphor for this. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of crashed, and I uh, regret it instantly. Uh, the king retired, Peter. Over the summer, he uh, he he had some swelling in his heart, uh, or what is it called? Do you remember? Myocardial sac. Yeah. Uh, more my yeah. So uh, he ended up having to uh, retire because of that, and so I was kind of hoping he would play one game for the Capitals. Yeah. Mostly because I promoted Capitals merch of Lundquist on our website, <laughs> so I felt really guilty about that. Uh, I think it's still a fun <laughs> conversation item. Um, I mean, I, he's a Capitals legend. Yes. He's a Capitals legend. Never gave up a single goal against. Oh, oh, yeah. Great uh, point. Here is my. I think my favorite thing you did all summer. I know this is small. Don't take that as like a, an insult. I just get no, a lot. Okay. Of, I get a lot of joy out of you. <laughs> forcing the rangers through shame to change their their macro their their template for like messages to drop on twitter because of how much we like rag them over their earlier ones with the what was the, we do, what was the line like that was the, amazing the violence line that they did and the the tom wilson one to, <laughs> and they're just like you know yeah, what they're... we've gotten we've gotten owned so many times on the internet we're just going to switch to this really classy <laughs> uh sarah font that that is an italics and has a graphite pencil scan circling the Rangers they have, logo. They did a circle around the New York Rangers, like this team. Yeah. Right. I, uh, okay. So, like, really quick, like as a designer, you know, they're trying to call out the Rangers logo, but but as a designer, a designer would look at this and say, "Why would you use the pencil when everything else is perfect? Like, like it has a fancy texture, it has a very professional font, everything about it is professional." Then, like, it's a line, like it just doesn't make any sense. Anyways, yeah. The, so, like, I noticed that, like, as soon as they uh, announced Lundquist's um, 
retirement and that they were going to retire his jersey number last year. I was like, oh my God, they're still using that screaming font uh, from when they said Tom Wilson uh, committed uh, uh, remember the violence. So it was yeah, like that's exhilarating violence. It was it was like a good trailer for like a splatter movie. Yeah, it's like I never assume people will respond to something I say on Twitter. Oh, they did. No, you owned them. You got, you got their asses. <laughs> we got like so many favorites on that too, and it was like Rangers fans were tweeting us, being like, "You're so right." <laughs> that's so funny. Dead meme. They they would have been better off using the notes, uh, the screenshot of the notes app. That's that's, that's a <laughs> yeah, bit I'm gonna use on our meeting next year. Uh, all right, TV. Uh, a lot of people get confused about this. So, locally, there's gonna, there's still, you're still gonna get your Joe Bean locker on mm -hmm. NBC Sports Washington. Um, Ian, how many games will we get of Joe Bean locker? Sixty nine. Yes. Uh, but the national license is no longer with NBC Sports, which might as well not exist anymore. It's basically just like a, an Olympics sub brand uh instead it'll be like split between espn and the turner networks the two of the one that i think of are tbs and tnt um mm -hmm. which is actually really exciting it's i think it's i think it's really good to get espn in on like the gretzky chase in particular yeah uh, and it's good to get some new blood <laughs> well <laughs> okay that was unfortunate because then the tnt shared their like uh their lineup i put little nbc icons against the people that are on nbc last year um i feel really bad what about are you this. trying to say peter it's the exact same broadcast it's the exact, almost i bet they're gonna have the same camera people um <laughs> but, that. but they do have they do have the greatest uh person in hockey right now which sorry it's a love fest here it's jackie redmond oh i have a line through i was Okay, tell me about that. No, okay. no, it's okay. I know it's I know it's your boy Tarek. And Tarek's my boy too. I make fun of him constantly now. That's how I know we're boys. But Yeah, I think I on the good tribute side they're doing good. I felt really bad because Tarek wasn't in the first announcement I saw, and then I did a quote retweet when this image came out that says I'd rather take a cheese grater to my nips. And <laughs> I didn't see that Tarek's name was in there. And then I did, I was like, oh god, I love Tarek. Um, this is what uh, Wayne Gretzky's face looks like if you put it through Facetune. <laughs> kind of looks like Putin. Kind of looks like Putin. Um, anything about the Olympics? Maybe he is. Anything about the Olympics? Uh, it's gonna happen, I guess. Dude, it is on a like knife's edge. If anything <laughs> goes wrong, they're like jettisoning it, and then all of a sudden, like it will cause like labor strife. So like. They're like, yeah, it'll work as long as the schedule permits. Like, we built this in, but we have z like if if games start getting canceled, and I'll tell you what, like, there are about three states that have about four teams that are not doing great on some of the measurements that we care about right now. Uh, <clears throat> Predators, uh, Stars, Panthers, and and Tampa. Uh, uh, if anything goes funky, they really need to. Well, we'll see. Anyway, lots of vaccinated people. I hope that the players in those four teams in particular are like triple vaccinated. Um, that if anything happens, I think the Olympics are going to get jettisoned. Yeah, it'll be fun. Obi's not going to win the the gold, guys. Don't we're not going to we're not even going to we're not going to turn that. Don't don't worry about it. Crosby's going to get another one. <laughs> wait, what happens if he? Wait, wait. What if Ovi wins gold, but Obi's. technically it wasn't for Russia? Oh. Because uh, remember, he's, he's going to be an athlete from Russia, but he's not. It's not a Russian gold medal. I think like he still like will like, you know, do like a like a thing with Putin. That was Malkin, right? <laughs> or no, M Malkin was like, <laughs> oh no, yeah, yeah, no, no. I think they both did it. Can yeah, you I don't know. Um, that's that's <laughs> the end of my presentation. Thank you for uh, staying with me. Um, Amazing. Uh, closing closing thoughts from you, if you have any. Uh, I think this year is going to be weird. I probably am the least excited don't, in terms of maybe like the team. The no, no, hear me out. Hear me out. I, I'm the least excited in terms of what I think the team's output will be. Meaning, I think it could be a non-playoff year. Maybe. Probably not, but maybe. I mean, because you see, I, I, I think you look at teams like the Devils. Uh, I think you take a look at teams like the Rangers, who have a ton of offensive firepower. Um, 
that could just come out of nowhere. I think the Islanders are probably the best team in the division. I could be wrong. Maybe. I don't know. It's 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 um, it's, it's, it's going to be up for grabs. I think you're right that like New York's yeah. probably like the the locus of stuff. I think Pennsylvania is going to be the 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 variance of of Pennsylvania could be all over the place. You could have yeah. Philly being a basement team, especially if they're like, we're gonna play. I don't know what to expect from them. Yeah, no, you never do because you're like two years ago. They're like, oh, up and coming Philadelphia Flyers. Let's get yeah. some rivalry going. They're like, just kidding. We suck. I think like look at the moves they made over the summer. Like it seems like they got worse, but like yes. I, extensions that they like, get, don't like, make any sense. Average goaltending, maybe they're okay. I, so I think it's. I don't know. Uh, well, you know what? Let's get let's get a couple games in the season, and then uh, we'll we'll take a walk around the metro and do some power rankings. Because I'm a little I'm I'm on the same vibe as you. I, I think I think the way for me to personally close it is I show this puck I got. So when I so when I went to lockers of uh, golf outing, I saw Joe B in locker, and and I asked Joe B to sign a puck for me, and he signed it a little special for me, and I just wanted to show you guys. Let's see if. It reads, Joe B. Suit of the Night. <laughs> awesome. I just, I just, it's beautiful. And I love that man. I just, I love him. And we've and got, I love we'll him. have 69 Locker. nights with him coming up. And, yeah, and I hope Locker comes plays hockey with me someday. He promised. Alrighty, I'm hitting the outro music. Thank you, everybody. Let's just wave. This has been Russian Machine Never Breaks, the podcast. But now it's over. Nothing to see here. Move along.